Long a well-kept secret to the rest of the world, Australia, the land down under, has emerged with full splendor in the late 20th century. It's paradise to those who live here, a great escape to those who come to share its vast and beautiful countryside. International Video Network welcomes you on this video visit to the great southern continent of Australia as we unfold the secrets of the land down under. Australia is a land of contrasts. From the blue-green Indian and Pacific Oceans surrounding the world's largest island to the hell-hot center, the outback, the dry land. The land down under, an expression coined by Aussies who refer to their seasons running opposite or upside down those of the northern hemisphere, has the distinction of being the world's oldest, driest, and flattest of continents. Although physically isolated from other parts of the world, it is a land of great mineral wealth and a vigorous, generous, and friendly population of 16 million. While the land mass compares approximately with that of the continental United States, it has less than one-tenth the population. Located in the southern hemisphere, divided by the Tropic of Capricorn, and surrounded by more than 12,000 miles of shoreline, Australia was the last of the developed continents to be discovered and explored. Dutch sailor Willem Jans made the first confirmed sighting in 1606, but it was one. William Jansen was born in 1570. He was educated in navigation in a small port village in Amsterdam where he developed the desire to go to sea. In 1558, Jansen went out to explore for the first time as a cadet. In that time, he witnessed the destruction of the Spanish Armada and decided to pursue defenses. His affair with exploration began when he first sailed as captain to the East Indies. When he returned, he was appointed employee of the Dutch East India Company, or VOC, in 1602. After making his name known to the world, Jansoon was granted his very own ship, the Doyston, in 1603. In 1605, orders were given to explore more of the Pacific. Jansoon appointed Stephen Vanderhagen as his mate for this journey into the unknown. On November 18, 1605, the crew set out from their trading base in Bantam to the western coast of New Guinea for exploration. Weeks into the journey, they spotted dark land on the horizon and charted it for days. This land was western New Guinea. While making landfall, Jansoon and his crew were attacked by natives, leaving eight crew members dead. Jansoon then turned south, unknowingly passing through the then undiscovered Torres Strait into Australia. In early 1606, Jansoon spotted new landscape. In January of 1606, Jansoon landed in Tenafather River the first landing in Australia to be recorded. He charted over 300 miles of western coast, making landfall at least five times and taking in beautiful landscape. After charting over 300 miles, provisions were running, running low and Jan soon decided to turn around in Cape Kierweer in Waipia. They sailed back up the charted coast and landed past their original landfall. Near the end of this trip, Jansoon landed in a river north of Waipia, where indigenous people assaulted and killed the first European in Australia. After this, Jansoon decided they needed to head home with what they had, and returned to Banta many weeks later with charted lands and newfound glory. Jansoon returned to Australia in 1618, charting new territory there. When he returned to the Netherlands, Jansoon served as an admiral of the Dutch defense fleet sailing to India, Mania, and of course, the East Indies. At the end of his life, Jansoon served as governor of Banda, dealing mainly with navigation and trade defenses, and retired at the age of 60 before dying in 1630.